One of the aspects of these freshwater mussels that's particularly interesting is their adaptations to living in their environment. Uh, in this case, to living in a relatively fast-moving river environment. And one of the challenges faced by an animal like this is to remain uh, burrowed in the substrate at the bottom of the river, uh, despite the movement of water. And so there are a couple of different kinds of adaptations that you can see uh, in the shells, in the morphology of the shells, to this uh, issue of, of remaining static despite the water moving around them. Two of those uh, adaptations are illustrated here, and they're a really good example because they actually show uh, one case where it's probably uh, an ancestral state that evolved maybe once in an early species, and then that kind of feature is shared among all of its descendants who are closely related. And another example in the same sampling effort here, uh, in the same part of the river, where you have two species that are not closely related that have evolved uh, similar morphologies independently, so we call that convergent evolution. And I'll give you, I'll show you this example here. So on these two mussels, these are two different species. On the left, the maple leaf, and on the right, the pimpleback. And you can see why it's called that. It's covered in bumps. Uh, there's actually another one in the same general group here, uh, warty back, got a name. Also illustrating the bumps. Uh, this kind of bump helps to keep them anchored in the uh, gravel or the sand at the bottom. You can see where they've been burrowed in. Uh, and this is a case where these are two species that are closely related. They're not necessarily uh, going to remain in the same genus. There will be some revision. But they are a clade. They are a, a single evolutionary group, share a common ancestor, and the group is actually uh, comprised of many species and they all tend to have some form of uh, bumps like that. So this is probably an ancestral feature that evolved early on and is maintained in all of the descendants in that group. A very different situation over here where we have the uh, white heel splitter and the pink heel splitter. Now this is a shell, this is a living one. We found both of these in the same area. They look superficially very similar. In particular they have this adaptation of a, a wing which helps to deflect water and uh, help them remain in their position in the current. These two species are not closely related. So this is an example where the ancestor that is shared fairly distantly among them did not have this feature. And this has evolved independently in both groups. So this would be an example of convergent evolution, whereas this is the maintenance of an ancestral uh, condition.